QAnon, Capitol Riot, and the Christian response. Also, Sarah Silverman says there's no hell, and she'll promise you that. Stay with us as we look at these and other stories on the 511 News. Now, there are two kinds of people in the world, only two kinds, not black and white, not rich and poor. There are those who are dead in sin, and there are those who are dead to sin. After three nights of unbridled lawlessness across London, the contagion is spreading. The problem is that God has already judged this. He has judged murder already. I don't need to question it. I don't need to ask and wonder what his plan is. We're commanded as Christians not to participate in the works of darkness, but expose them. Welcome back to the 511 News. I'm your host, Chad Davidson of Good Fight Ministries. And on today's episode, we have some of those topics that, as always, don't bother anybody, and we just remain tranquil with all of our listeners. <laughs> now I hear Tony laughing in the background. Uh, no, that you know what? When it comes to issues, especially with 511 News, one of the things that we do here is we talk about the things that are relevant, and we always want them brought back to the obedience of Christ. That's the most important thing. And so no matter what the topic is, I want to make sure that we are discussing things in light of Scripture. Let's not turn it in light of anything else other than Scripture. And one of the things that is going on, obviously, and and I wanted to bring this out because I would have done last week's episode on this issue, but the fact is, is that last week we ended up having to record earlier. I usually record the day before you guys get it. We record, Tony edits and puts it up, but that week we had to record on Tuesday because I was at my great-grandma's funeral and I was able to give the message there for the funeral, which was awesome. Uh, Obviously, it's not awesome to be at a funeral usually, but the Bible does say it's better to be in a place of mourning than a place of feasting because you can people consider their end, and so you want to be there to share a true gospel message, and I was able to do that and was blessed by it. But while I was in the midst of doing the funeral, a lot of my family members were talking about what was going on in the Capitol. And I know I thought, the first thing I thought was, oh man, this is going to happen, and guess what? I'm not able to even talk about it for for, for this week's show. Because it is a big deal, guys. We're talking about something that took place where everybody in the nation knows about it, and the liberals have done exactly what they wanted, is given them a way to uh, once again impeach Trump, which is literally a formality because they're not even going to get it done, as I believe Mitch McConnell even wrote that. I'm not a big Mitch McConnell fan, but even he wrote last night, I believe, on Twitter that, what are you guys doing trying to do this? (laughs) Like, We don't even have enough time. It would take months uh, to do an impeachment trial, and there's like six days left or something. So just the whole thing um, is nonsense, and I don't even think, in all honesty, this is just my personal opinion, and I'll be talking a lot about things I disagree with, but I don't even believe that Trump, what he did was an impeachable offense, personally. But nonetheless, um, I mean, maybe I'm wrong. You guys could, uh, you know, you political experts can— can lambast me for that one. I'm not. I'm not really sure. But I, I didn't. I didn't really see from what he said that he was inciting violence and so forth, or, or especially not that he was unable to fulfill his duties as a president. But nonetheless, this has been not only news all over the place, but a lot of Christians, I think, are putting on the gloves and going after each other concerning how they feel about this. And a lot of Christians are were excited about the Capitol riots that I've seen online, and others like myself. Uh, we're very disappointed in those Christians who were in support of the insurrection that took place. Now, don't get me wrong. I hate the fact that Joe Biden is going to be president and Kamala Harris, I believe, will eventually be president as well because Joe Biden will eventually not be able to withhold that <laughs> withhold that to that post uh, or stand up at that post because I don't know how much he has cognitively, in all honesty, and they, I guess you can only pour so much adrenaline in you for those debates that they were doing, right? That's probably why he wasn't speaking, and pretty much all you hear of him now are every once in a while with some tweets and so forth. And Kamala Harris, I believe, is a wicked, evil person. And I've heard a lot of people, Christians, when even when Trump was running, I would have Christians tell me, hey, I don't, I don't want a Christian as my president or as my leader, but the Bible's pretty clear that righteousness exalts a nation, And so we want to make sure that as much as we can, we can have righteous people in there. But also one of the big things is I think that 
uh, many Christians who I love have put their hope in not only Trump, but now they've put their hope in this investigation that we're going to find out all this all this stuff and that on the 20th, the real guy who's going to be inaugurated is going to be President Trump. Now, I could be wrong. I'm, I'm not saying I'm 100% right. And in all honesty, I the political realm is a realm that I don't dip my toes in too much because it is so corrupt from top down. And I feel as though that would be wasting a lot of the time that I pour into the scriptures and I pour into understanding what's going on in the culture to answer people. But I still try my best to remain somewhat knowledgeable so that when people ask me questions, I'm able to answer how I feel about certain things. And one of the things that I have noticed that Trump has done a great job is in polarizing people's beliefs one way or the other. You see, if you go on Twitter and search, I'm sure, well, now, especially with all the conservatives being knocked off, and I want to give a uh, my viewpoint on that at the very end of this message, so hopefully Tony will remind me if I forget, but if you go on Twitter or something like this or any social media, this has been happening for a long time, that they've attempted to push down even those conservative opinions, so forth, that were in favor of Trump, and typically all you see are the people that absolutely despise and hate any decision. And then you have on the other side the those who are so pro-Trump that there is nothing he can do that is bad. And I point this out because this happened at our very own fellowship. I know that Joe gave a message concerning the peace plan where Trump was literally dividing up portions in that plan, portion of portions of Israel where God says that he will judge a nation that divides up those portions. So Joe just simply said, this is a bad thing. But you know what? You are not allowed to be centralized in politics, I guess, a real centralist where you say what somebody's doing is good and what someone's doing is bad because people came up and were furious that you would say anything bad against Donald Trump, even though some other people said, I, I don't even, actually someone contacted and said, I will no longer go to your fellowship because you said something good about Donald Trump. <laughs> Literally, when Joe went up there and said this was a good thing that Donald Trump had done. Somebody said, well, you don't understand that he is the Antichrist, and because he's the Antichrist, you're supporting him and so forth, so you are in delusion. Guys, we recognize that a ton of pro-life legislation went through, and I'm guessing a lot of it's going to be thrown out because Kamala Harris is wicked, and so is Joe Biden, and so are the rest of the, the House and the Senate and so forth if they get in there, ultimately. And so we recognize that. And I also recognize that there were times where legislation did go through and Trump said it was too extreme when it came to, you know, saving babies uh, at the very, very youngest of age. And so we have to recognize that. We can recognize the things that were good and then we can recognize that when it was tweeted out that he was the most pro-homosexual president, he was proud of it and retweeted that tweet saying, yes, he is. So guys, there is nothing wrong with saying I would prefer... Trump over Joe Biden, okay? There is absolutely nothing wrong with that, and I have no problem with that. But I do feel there has been a lot of polarization. There has been a lot of pendulum swinging that having any central point of view concerning pol politics, you 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 get cast aside from both sides. And you know what? I don't care because I'm going to do what Scripture says, and I recognize when some— I'm not going to have— Scales that are corrupt that only weigh one side or the other. I recognize when both are one is good and one is evil. Now, I wanted to talk about this a little bit because, or a lot bit, but I know I don't have that much time today and, and we have a couple of issues we want to get through. But the QAnon folk, I guess you could say, those who follow Q, so to speak, this anonymous person online that supposedly has all the intel, even though he's been wrong on a number of occasions as well, and there's always a way around that, right? Um, I, I do believe that plenty of people have fallen into a lot of the lies that have been put out, and I think there is a bad eschatology, even goes as far as New Age when it comes to this. Now, I had watched somebody Somebody, actually someone who I know that, that actually follows a lot of the stuff that Q, uh, a lot of the people that follow Q uh, are into, sent me a video of somebody who left QAnon, and I watched the entire video, and I said, he made some good points here, but here's where he went a little wild. He said that Trump is the Antichrist. I believe that the Antichrist, as it says in uh, Daniel, I believe the 11th chapter, 
that he'll have no affection towards women. There's no one who knows Donald Trump that would say that he has doesn't have affection towards uh, women, uh, you know, and and other reasons. I believe that uh, my personal view is that the Antichrist is probably comes uh, from uh, Islam. Uh, but that that's my personal view. Some people say uh, Catholicism, uh, and I can see that as well. Th- th- those are both good and valid viewpoints. That's just my personal opinion when I see the scriptures. But uh, I don't want to get too too deep into the woods there. But nonetheless, I watched this video and I said, wow, you really pendulum swung there because you made a lot of good points waiting for these drops from Q to, you know, and now you're recognizing that a lot of it is new age and crazy. And that's actually what I don't I don't mean to say crazy there, but a lot of it's new age and some of it's a, a little wild to believe in. And I just saw recently on a comment from the episode we did on the Great Reset and and I and I encourage you guys to check that out on the Great Reset that we did a comment from somebody with a flaming Q, which is a symbol of hey I'm part of QAnon, and this is what they said, quote I'll see your reset and raise you a great awakening. In fact, we've had, we've had other people write in on the live uh, chats as well that says we're not looking for a revival, we're looking for revolution, but that revolution and awakening and so forth is supposed to bring out a Revival. Now, I can say this, guys. There are a couple guys online that I've listened to and I, I follow that actually have some really good stuff on this issue, much, much to much greater depth than I've looked into it. And that would be uh, Mike over there at On Point Preparedness and John at E511 Ministries. And you guys can check out their stuff they've done on this issue. And, uh, you know, let me know what you guys think of it because I think they've done a, a pretty good job of, of detailing some of the some of the things when it comes to Q and whether or not you guys should be following it because what I saw at the Capitol riots was not uh, becoming of Christians. I, I do not believe that we're supposed to be getting involved in these revelings. I don't believe we're supposed to be rioting. Um, that doesn't seem to be um, any sort of if you're doing something peacefully, it's it's one thing. You're trying to stop an injustice and so forth. And maybe you're right. Maybe 100 percent that that Trump was wronged. That the vote there was voter fraud. I've seen some some evidence that looks pretty pr- pretty clear. I I mean when I've looked online and and so forth and seen some pretty crazy videos. I had a Newsmax story sent to me yesterday uh, that that from from Texas I believe showing some and and they're usually not too bad on their on their sourcing, but. Um, you know, nonetheless, guys, I, I don't want your hope deferred. And I also want to point out something that corruption in elections, I'm sure, is something that has existed all the way back, right? <laughs> I mean, all the way back to George Washington, probably, and all the way up, okay? It's not something new. Uh, this corruption is corruption is corruption is corruption. And I think that, yeah, there probably are some from fraudulent things. And maybe... Trump did win. I, I'm not sure. Maybe he ultimately should have been uh, the victor. I'm I, I'm not giving you an answer one way or the other uh, that I've been convinced either way. Some of it, some of the evidence, uh, you know, when you think about some of the counties, I, I believe, <laughs> I believe Joe Biden won less counties than Obama, but he had more votes. I mean, some of the stuff you're like, okay, this doesn't make a lot of sense. But nonetheless, even if guys, there's corruption, even if he is placed in there, and you're you end up being your hope is deferred. Uh, on the 20th, and he is inaugurated, even if all that does take place, and it was corruption, guess what? Romans 13 is still true. Romans 13 is still true regardless of corruption, because it was true in Russia, it was true in Africa, it was true in every other nation that is corrupt, that God himself is the one who still places those leaders there. Sometimes it's for judgment, guys. Maybe it's for judgment with all the babies and the and the blood that is dripping from our nation. Maybe it's for all the wickedness. I'm not sure, but I do know that whatever leader is in there for our country, we recognize that they're there specifically because God placed them there, whether it's for our blessing or for the curses that our nation has called upon itself for its wickedness. And I want to put into perspective because it is really important for us to understand what spirit we are of. It's really important for us to understand how we are to be looked at by the outside world. And I believe Peter gives us one of the best examples of this in 1 Peter chapter 4, starting at verse 1, because it is really, really important that we care how we are viewed to the outside world 
not in the sense that we care in light of the gospel of Christ, that they consider us foolish for the things we believe, but care in terms of our conduct. And it says this in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1, Therefore, since Christ has suffered in the flesh, arm yourself also with the same purpose, because the one whom has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, so as to live the rest of the time in the flesh no longer for human lusts, but for the will of God. For the time has already passed and is sufficient for you to have carried out the desires of the Gentiles, having pursued a course of indecent behavior, lust, drunkenness, carousing, revelings, and wanton idolatries. In all this, they are surprised that you do not run in the same excesses of debauchery and they slander you. Let's make sure we pay attention as Paul quoted in uh, Epimendes in 1 Corinthians 15, 33, when he said, bad company, do not be deceived, bad company corrupts good morals. And I, I would be very concerned with, I would say, somebody who is the picture of the recent riot, somebody who was literally there where the speaker of the house usually stands, sitting there putting hands up of victory. And I want you to hear the religious beliefs of this man, and then I'm going to read a little bit of a description of him so you guys can hear it yourself. Tony, let's play the clip. Post up some video of you dancing and doing your music. Let's talk about the spiritual aspect of what you do, and you'll probably do a little bit here before we get kicked off today. Sure. So um, what I do is I practice something known as shamanism, and in shamanism, they sing, they dance, they drum, and they inform the community. They dress up in a way that chases off evil spirits. The singing and the drumming is about chasing off evil spirits because uh, sound actually precedes electromagnetic activity. So when you sing and you drum, especially when you do so really loudly, you end up affecting the quantum realm. And this has been being done for thousands of years to ward off evil spirits, ward off negative timelines, and to basically bring positive energy. So part of the reason why I dress this way is because if we were going to have have like a uh, infiltrator or something like that. They'd be a witch. They'd be a sorcerer or something like that on the dark side. So I practice life magic. I practice the light side or the positive side of shamanism. And when they see me, they go, "Oh, yeah, we got a we got a big fish out here." Yeah, there's a big fish out there. Uh, the man described as the QAnon shaman who became the face last week of the Capitol riots in Washington after being photographed shirtless, sporting a, a horned headdress and painted face, is a Navy veteran who worked as a supply clerk, according to reports. Jacob Anthony Chansley, 33, also known as Jake Angeli of Arizona, was arrested Saturday by federal authorities on charges of illegally entering a restricted building and a violent entry and disorderly conduct on the Capitol grounds, according to the U.S. Justice Department. Guys, this is one of the leaders of the riots. And guys, th this is one of your Q friends if you are a part of that. And I think it's really, really important for us to recognize some of the company that you may be keeping. When these people over and over again, and you're waiting for information and, and encouraging each other on these things, are all pushing this great awakening, pushing this new second revolution and so forth, Guys, we need to recognize it, point it out and say, this is wicked. I'm not going to keep company with that. I'm not going to put my hope in Trump getting back in office and one day hopefully having all the seven mountains mandated and then going forth and now we will rule with a rod of iron. So many people have been positively duped that the end times are going to be accompanied by us ruling and reigning pre-thousand year reign. So many people have been positively duped that we will now take control after we gain the seven mountains of cultural influence and then run the show that we're going to have this revolution and that there's going to be this great revival in the end times. You are being lied to. The Bible says the exact opposite. When it comes to the end times, the Bible actually says there's not a great revival. The thing that happens is a great falling away. You see, because the, the outpouring of blessing and the outpouring of, of grace that does happen in the end times is specifically speaking about the fountain of cleansing that happens when the Jews look and see the one whom they've pierced and grieve bitterly for him. 
Okay, that is when the fountain is open for cleansing. But ultimately, this revival of control is something that you just see as foreign to scriptures. In fact, in the end times in Revelation chapter 13, verses 9 through 10, it actually tells us about the perseverance of the saints. Plenty of people love to use that, right, as a, as a you know, the Calvinistic P in the tulip, the perseverance of the saints. But what is the perseverance of the saints? If anyone has an ear, let him hear. Do you have an ear? Then listen. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. If anyone is destined for captivity, to captivity he goes. If anyone is killed with the sword, with the sword he must be killed. Here is the perseverance of the saints. It seems so backwards, right? That the Bible actually says that the perseverance of the saints is in fact your death or hiding. This isn't a ruling or a reigning. In fact, when we look at the seven churches, and I don't have enough time to go through all of them, but I want to go over what real overcoming is because we get it over and over again to the seven churches as we get to read someone else's mail. When we look at the seven churches, these letters that were written to these churches to convict them, to commend places like Philadelphia and so forth, when we see these letters It doesn't just end there that we see that and it's mail for someone else because every time that you read these letters, he says, if anyone has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the seven churches. So we need to pay attention to what's being said there. And so I will read in the church of Ephesus in Revelation 2, 7, it says, the one who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who overcomes, I will grant to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. But what does it mean to overcome? You see, in the very beginning of chapter 2 there, when talking to Ephesus, it is those who persevere. That is the overcoming. Persevering, withstanding the trial, not you ruling and reigning over the seven mountains and then taking control and this great awakening. I don't want that great awakening, I'll tell you right now. This great awakening will take over and now we'll be able to run and rule and to reign. Then we have in Smyrna, Revelation 2.11. The one who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the seven churches. The one who overcomes will not be hurt by the second death. That should be all of our goal. That overcoming is the one that I want. And if you go back to verse 8, it says that they are going to be thrown in prison and tested. And then verse 10, right before it says the one who overcomes, gives us the exact context. What? Who are the ones that overcome? Be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. Yes, sometimes your death is your overcoming that you may be tested for an hour. Maybe it's going to hurt for a little bit, and it's tough. In fact, I think about this when it comes to the early church, and we'll be talking about hell a little bit. And so kind of instead of me quoting it when we get there, because I already see my time running shorter as I have another video to play, but as I see my time running shorter, you can think about this as an eternal, unquenchable fire that, that Polycarp, who was a disciple of John the Apostle, who wrote the Apocalypse, that he is the one who writes these words at his own martyrdom. He says this of other martyrs, fixing their minds on the grace of Christ, the martyrs despised worldly tortures and purchased eternal life with but a single hour. To them, the fire of their cruel tortures was cold. They kept before their eyes their escape from the eternal and unquenchable fire. That comes from the martyrdom of Polycarp, chapter 2, verse 3. And I love that. That's such a powerful thing to say, to be burnt at the stake and to call it cold compared to what's going to happen to those who are burning them and do not repent. And I love that because when we look at the early church, we see over and over again that as Tertullian stated, that the blood of the Christians is the seed of the church, we see over and over again that as their blood was spilled, people would see their true faith and be repentant. One of the things I worry about when it comes to this whole movement, this whole second revolution, this whole great awakening and, and QAnon, one of the things I worry about is them having a spirit of rebellion. People are so excited simply to rebel. You know how many people I know that are just going to churches that are not saved, do not know the Lord, but they're going just because they're like, yeah, I want to rebel against the government. Now, the Lord can use that. I know plenty of people who have gone to church, and I, I know plenty of people who love the Lord now who gone to church just because they wanted to be with uh, a woman, <laughs> and then eventually they got saved, and the woman left, and they stayed. And those things have happened. 
right? And I think Paul addresses that someone in Philippians as well when it talks about those who would preach, even though they were helping to put him in prison and keep him there, right? Uh, those who would preach, even if they do it in pretense or for their own, uh, you know, for their own gain, that still the Lord can work through that. So whatever the purpose is, hopefully they'll hear the word of God even at those churches. But sometimes it's like, guys, there is a spirit of rebellion, and I don't want to be rebellious for rebellious sake. I want to make sure that I live peaceably as I can in this world, recognizing that this is not my home. Guys, I would I would, I would, would just offer this, and if you're already mad enough listening to this and you're like, QAnon just help me out in all this ways, I, I understand. But I, I want you to just do some circumspecting here. Look at, look at, go to your Facebook page. This is very simple because you may not have one now, but <laughs> if you do, or if you can just look at the center of your heart and, and, and say, Lord, help me to, to, to look at what I've been doing, go and look what you've posted about. If it's five to one, two to one, 10 to one, you've talked about these things rather than the gospel of Jesus Christ, I'm asking you why. And I'm not going to get into the Sarah Silverman thing because I'm going to I want to finish up here because this is something really important. I only have a couple of minutes. But guys, I th- I I really want you to understand and 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 take recollection about what you've been posting about. You know, I I remember seeing a meme a long time ago when I when I was first getting involved with my own Facebook and and helping run Good Fight and it says, "As for me and my Facebook, we will serve the Lord." Right? And using it as an avenue, and and this is why I wanted to talk about this because we we look at them blocking Donald Trump and all the pretty much a lot of supporters and stuff on Twitter, and then he got blocked on Spotify. I don't even know what that means. Like, is he not allowed to listen to music? I have no idea what they're talking. Been blocked on Snapchat, um, pedophile paradise over there in Snapchat and uh, TikTok. Anyways, um, but but blocking them, and I want to say this because one of the reasons when I asked Pastor Joe. Schimmel to do this show, to do not not Five Love News, but do the uh, Good Fight radio show, which we're doing, um, and th- that we do now. One of the reasons I asked him, I said, hey, Joe, I don't know how long it will be that they will continue to allow us to put truth out on their conglomerate. I don't know how long they will continue to allow us to say homosexuality is a sin, abortion is murder, speak out the truth in love to people, to call them to repentance, how long we can use the platforms and continue to use the sword of Goliath to cut his head off. I don't know how long we're going to be able to do that. And so let's get out as many shows as possible. Let's record as much as we possibly can talking about these things so we can see people come to Christ. Guys, when your main focus, when you go back and look has not been the Lord, and most people, if they looked at your last 10 to 15 posts, would have no idea that you love Jesus. I ask you, why is it this way? And I would say, guys, let's all take account of ourselves. We have an avenue where maybe you don't have a lot of people, but plenty of people, especially non-believers, friends, so forth, have a way of seeing you talk about the things of Christ I'm not going to trade that for anything. I want people to see God through my Facebook. I want them to know, hey, I I want them to know the Lord. And when I say my Facebook, most of what I'm talking about is is the Good Fight Ministries Facebook. And And I want them to know Jesus because ultimately they could support Trump. They could support QAnon and so forth. But if they don't have Jesus, who cares? I've taught at a number of rehabs, and one of the things that I always say to them, if you simply get sober and then go back into the world and are not saved, you will be sober all the way to hell. And I would tell you this, if you simply become conservative or Republican or so forth, you could be Republican all the way, and a lot of a lot of them had be have been. And I'm sure you're saying, hey, they're all rhinos, you know, but <laughs> but nonetheless, a lot of them have been. You you could be a Republican, a conservative, a Democrat, all the way to hell, no matter what you think about those policies. And I want to encourage you guys, use what a time we have. If I can beg you with Ephesians chapter five, verse 16 in mind, that make the most of your time because the days are evil. You don't know how much time you have left on earth, and you don't know how much time you have left to share the truth with people on social media. So get out there and serve your king. The 511 News with Chad Davidson has been brought to you by Good Fight Ministries. 
bringing you news and commentary from a Christian perspective. This show can be heard every Friday wherever podcast shows are available or visit 511news.org. Thank you for joining us and we look forward to being with you next week on the 511 News.